Hi, it's Drew from Alza Video, and welcome to our seminar series, Perfecting DSLR Audio. The DSLR has become the sweetheart of many industry professionals because of the high quality of video at relatively low cost and the shallow depth of field. Shallow depth of field allows a videographer to isolate foreground and background subjects, and this produces a characteristic film look. Although the DSLR is capable of excellent images, it falls short on audio recording. A DSLR does not have the balanced microphone inputs, there's no channel level controls, and the current crop of DSLRs with HD video do not provide live audio monitoring. You're going to need some additional audio gear with your DSLR. There are several gear options available to add sophisticated audio front ends to a DSLR, and these options fall into two categories. The first, is an audio recording device like the Zoom H4n. And second is an audio mixer that connects to the DSLR audio input. Let's look at some of these typical DSLR rigs with these two options. Here we have a Canon 5D Mark II on the Alzo transformer bracket with a Zoom H4n recorder and a Marshall monitor. Now notice that there's no cable connecting the H4N to the camera, although you could connect the monitor output of the H4N to the audio end in the camera, but we'll cover that in a minute. But in this rig example, the recorder is acting independent of the camera. Now included with the H4N are balanced XLR microphone inputs, level controls, VU meters, and an audio monitoring output port. Using an audio recording device will require syncing the audio in post-production, and there are some software solutions that simplify this task. But keep in mind, separate audio recording adds some extra work in post. Here we have a Canon 5D Mark II on the Alzo transformer bracket with a Juice Link preamp mixer and a Marshall monitor. The output of the mixer is connected to the audio input on the camera. Now all of the mixer preamps include balanced XLR microphone inputs, level controls, some form of view meter, and an audio monitor output port. I'm going to sidebar now on audio monitoring. The purpose of audio monitoring with headphones while filming is to assure quality audio recording and oh yes, lots of things can go wrong, like poor levels and noise, interference, and if you're not monitoring, you may wreck your project. Earbuds are popular audio monitors, but the best device for audio monitoring is sound isolating heavy duty headphones. Good quality monitoring headphones like these allow you to hear subtle audio problems and cost around 50 bucks. Ideally, you want to monitor the actual signal being recorded and not the signal generated by the mixer. But DSLRs typically do not provide audio monitor outputs, so when using a mixer, always use a high quality interconnect cable and keep a spare on hand for insurance. Always test the connection between the mixer and the camera with a short test recording prior to actual recording. In addition, Magic Lantern firmware upgrades include VU meter options in the camera live view mode. Another subject we need to cover is AGC, or Automatic Gain Control. AGC is typically not a desirable feature for quality audio recording, but there are some situations when AGC does serve a purpose. In the early versions of the Canon 5D Mark II camera, AGC was the default and not an option. Later models and firmware upgrades have solved this problem by providing manual level control. Several of the active mixers on the market include an AGC disable feature, but I do not recommend using this because it can distort the audio. If available, it is best to install the firmware upgrade to the camera that allows manual audio level controls. Now let's compare the differences between the two DSLR rig audio recording options. Both audio mixers and audio recorders have balanced microphone inputs but the difference is that audio recorders are basically stereo devices. 
recording to left and right channels. And mixers are truly individual channel devices with separate level controls. Some audio mixers and some audio recorders include optional phantom power to drive condenser microphones, but these are the top of the line models. Audio mixers allow for monitoring the mix, but not the actual recording, whereas audio recorders always monitor the recording. Some mixers include some type of VU meters, but audio recorders typically have better meters. Using an audio mixer avoids any audio syncing issues, and using an audio recorder adds the post-production requirement of syncing the audio to the video. In-camera audio recording limits the audio format options. On the other hand, one of the powerful features of an audio recorder is the wide choice of audio file formats and data rates. There is a 12-minute recording limit factor with the Canon 5D Mark II. This limit can be overcome by using an audio recorder with hours of continuous recording ability. So those are the differences between using an audio mixer and an audio recorder. There is a third DSLR audio recording option, and this is dual or redundant recording. This technique uses an audio recorder followed by a mixer feeding audio into the camera. This redundant audio recording configuration, it's kind of like insurance. It ensures perfect audio recording. To help sort out this technique, we've invited videographer Brian Russell to Alzo Studios. We have Brian Russell of Red Shoe Film in our studio today who suggested a redundant recording technique. So Brian, first tell us, how do you do this? Well, I find a number of situations, Drew, where it's really helpful for me to have um, a fallback position or a safety safety catch, if you will. So what I do is I record into the Zoom H4n digital recorder from um, you know my, my microphones and out of the Zoom H4n, I'll take the output and I'll feed my um, mixer preamp. And then what I have is two sources of really good quality audio. Uh, it does a couple of things for me. Uh, the first thing that it does for me is it gives me the option to set levels differently on you know, these, the different channels. So if I have somebody that all of a sudden talks really loud, I not, don't end up with clipped audio yeah. somewhere. I have, a, I have a save point. Um, or if people dip down really low. It also gives me the opportunity to save myself in the event that I have a problem with the camera. Because even though I love in-camera audio, it's far easier to work with in my opinion and experience than you know second system sound. Uh, these are DSLRs and I work pretty much exclusively with DSLRs. Often shoot with two or three of them at a time. But if my primary audio capture device is a DSLR and it overheats, for example, as happened to me recently on a shoot, now I would have no sound, even though I had video on two other cameras. Mm. In this recent situation, I was able to save the whole shoot because I was able to, for that, you know, for that, you know, couple of minutes that the camera was down, I just jumped over to the second system sound. Cool. Piece Very of cake, cool. problem solved. Great. Can you tell us when you like to use the re this redundant uh, feature? Sure. I typically use a redundant feature for any sort of long audio recording. So if I'm recording some sort of concert, if I'm recording a speech, um, if I'm recording some sort of performance, then I will almost always use second system sound in conjunction with in-camera sound. If I'm recording short interviews, then I will usually not even bother with the second system sound. I'll only use the preamp mixer um, and I'll record everything direct to camera. The nice thing about short interviews is I can stop frequently. I can uh, play back, usually I'm monitoring with some sort of HDMI monitor mm -hmm. for the client to see or the producer to see. I can do a quick playback, hear the audio and video right through that monitor. Um, or I'll just take the card out, pop it in the computer really quickly and make sure everything's good. And then I just keep rolling. When do you prefer to use a preamp mixer versus a recorder? Well, here's the thing. Is that at the end of the day, the preamp mixer always makes my life easier. And for me, in, in the kind of business that I'm in, um, I shoot DSLRs because they look really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I shoot DSLRs because I'm able to capture images that were in my head that I could never get with regular video cameras. Mm -hmm. The downside, of course, has been sound. But I also need to move really quickly. I yeah. need to be able to shoot, edit, get the product out to the client. Um, I cannot make a living if I have to spend like days and weeks you know, doing all kinds of crazy things in post-production. So the reason that I choose to use the preamp mixer is because it you know, makes my life just much faster. It makes it faster when I'm ingesting. I just ingest and start editing right away. It also means that nothing ever goes out of sync. Um, you know, 
not that I can't do things in post to make sure that my second system sound doesn't go out of sync. There's, you know, there's, there's ways around all of these yeah. things. We know that, but it just makes life easier and faster. And, you know, to me, being able to produce high quality things that look really awesome and sound really great mm. um, in a short amount of time, uh, that's how I make my living. Yeah. Um, I, I you know, prefer to do that whenever I can. Well, Brian, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. We have reviewed several DSLR audio recording techniques and the equipment requirements. Our conclusion is there is no single choice of equipment that will work for all situations. For optimal DSLR video production, you should have an audio recorder, an audio mixer, and associated patch cables to allow for different rigging choices.